Hi everyone. So I'm going to continue the theme from the last speaker, uh, to, which is a little um, different from uh, the um, other speakers today, to talk about uh, rather than the detailed analysis, but rather than the application of uh, TCG data on the drug discovery, particularly I uh, want to talk about the integration, uh, integration analysis of TCG data in the identification of uh, novel targets and uh, prediction of patient population for the antibody drug conjugates. So antibody drug conjugates is a new modality that for the treatment of cancer. So it consists of, oh, sorry. So it consists of the antibody which is specifically targeted to the antigens that are expressed on the cell surface, as well as the toxic drug, which we also refer to as a payload. These two components are linked together by, the, by linker molecule. So antibody delivers this uh, cytotoxic drug into the cancer cells by binding to the antigens that are specifically expressed on the cell surface of the cancer, uh, tumor cells. Upon binding, this uh, complex are internalized into the tumor cells uh, through several stages of transport and in the some vesicles, these uh, complex uh, arise at, uh, uh, arriving at lysosome compartment. And uh, in this compartment, then this uh, ADCs will be, um, the antibody and also the linker will be re uh, cleaved to release the cytotoxic drugs. And this uh, cytotoxic drug then exits uh, from the lysosomes uh, and then reach to its uh, intended targets either which is uh, DNA or uh, tuberlins, uh, depends on the uh, mechanism of action of the payload. So cu currently there are two ADCs on the market, uh, which are targeting CD30 or HER2, which most of uh, you probably already heard of, uh, including both the hematopoietic malignancy and the solid tumor. In addition, there are more than 30 Probably uh, this is counting by uh, in 2013. By now, probably there are more than 30 on the very stage of clinical trials. So it's a very active field of research for the cancer treatment. So the efficacy, the final efficacy of ADC depends on the efficiencies uh, uh, of several steps uh, after the administration of ADCs and before it reaches its final target, either tubulin or DNA or some other uh, intended targets. So the first two steps are the, determ the characteristic that characteristics that uh, will determine our target selection strategy. For the first step, after the administration of ADC, the f efficiency of percentage ADCs that eventually reaches the tumor cells depends on the biodistribution of the, both the target and also the uh, ADC itself. So this uh, requires that this uh, potential target have very low expression in normal tissues. So we don't lose uh, ADCs uh, in the normal tissues and also lower the tox uh, potential toxicity. And then the second step is uh, how many percentage of ADC will bound to the tumor cells. This depends, this will require us uh, to have the targets that have very high expression on the tumor cell surface. Uh, so as you can see, that in order to increase or achieve the optimum therapeutic index for ADC therapeutics, uh, we, the target should have a characteristic of uh, low expression on the tumor, uh, on the normal tissue, but high expression on the tumor tissues. So of course, uh, the protein expression will be the optimum data to, to use for identify such targets. However, uh, the availability of uh, protein expression data is far less than the availability of uh, messenger RNA expression data in different, across different tumor types and also different normal tissue type, cell types or tissue types. So we resorted to the messenger RNA -like level expression as an approximation for the protein expression to estimate the target expression on the tumor cell surface uh, as, as well as the normal tissues. So here I'm, oh, sorry. I'm just showing you an example um, although we all know that the correlation of uh, messenger RNA and protein expression level are not perfect, but in some cases uh, they have, sh have shown to be pr uh, have a very good correlation. Here is an example between the HER2 messenger RNA expression level and the HER2 protein level using the TCJ data. We see a, a relative, a, a very good correlation. 
In addition, in the recent clinical trial, we have seen that higher response rate to the TDM1 uh, molecule that targets HER2 uh, showed the, um, are observed for the patient with uh, high expression of messenger RNA level by QPTC, qPCR. So this is uh, uh, give us uh, um, some uh, uh, hope that we can potentially use a messenger RNA level expression to, as approximation. So we decided to use, an, given the availability of large scale of TCG data that we can utilize to estimate the expression in the tumor, tumor samples, and also the, another large scale data set, uh, GTAX, uh, we can use, use uh, for the normal tissue target expression estimation. So in addition to the antigen uh, characteristics, uh, Another factor that uh, governs our, the strategies for target identification uh, selection criteria is depending on the ADC payload itself. What kind of mechanism of action each of the different payload class have, uh, will govern us uh, to uh, have different selection criteria. For example, uh, the two very well-known payload class are tubulin-based inhibitors uh, and also DNA damage-based uh, inhibitors. They have distinct mechanism of action. Tubulin-based inhibitor mostly targeting the proliferating cells. Therefore, they can um, tolerate low to medium normal tissue expression. However, uh, they're compared to the DNA damage-based payload, their potency is uh, uh, less. So we require high level expression of uh, target expression on the tumor. Uh, in contrast, DNA damage payload class, uh, class of payload targeting both proliferating and non-proliferating cells. So this will require very stringent uh, expression on the normal tissue expression to lower their toxicity because they are highly potent payload class. Uh, however, due to their high potency, uh, we, can tar we can have targets that have lower level expression. So this slide just uh, um, described the strategies that we designed to select ta target uh, for ADC uh, antibody drug conjugates. So from the tumor expression data from TCGA, we calculate tumor scores. I will describe a little bit more in detail in the next slide. But then we also calculate normal score reflecting the target expression on the normal t variety of normal tissues uh, using the uh, GTAX data. And we formulate different selection criteria based on the tumor score and normal score. These cr criteria are tailored to different type of uh, payload class for ADCs. In addition, because uh, this uh, has to be, this, tar this type, type of target has to be expressed on the cell surface, so we also including uh, prediction based, uh, for the transmembrane protein to uh, so ensure they are uh, on the cell surface. Um, so tumor scores are calculated in two, there are in two factors. So the one is we require this uh, tumor versus normal differential expression to be significant for these uh, potential targets. And also using RNA-seq data, we, can, we are able to uh, quantitatively estimate the abundance frequency. In other words, uh, we can estimate the prevalence of uh, the target expression in certain tumor types uh, using a percentage of samples uh, that are expressed above certain expression threshold. These expression thresholds are defined uh, differently for different type of payload class with the, the expression threshold is higher than in the macron tubing based the payload than the DNA damage. Similarly, we calculate normal score to reflect the, their expression in the normal tissues using the GTAX data. These are calculated as number of normal tissues express these certain targets at uh, uh, above certain threshold. So this is an example in breast cancer, how, can we, how we can use these two type of scoring systems to identify potential targets. Uh, <clears throat> so left panel shows the distribution of normal score versus tumor scores of all the human uh, genes. Uh, and then we, you, uh, upon using the filter of uh, transmembrane prediction, we limited them to the, these uh, brain uh, dots here. And then further by using the tumor score selection criteria and normal score criteria, we can separately predict the different type of uh, targets for different type of uh, payload class. For example, the purple region here, we have, we have a very high tumor score cutoff 
but a medium uh, normal score cutoff, uh, uh, this will be targets for the MTI payload, which are shown on the right corner here, uh, which, which we can successfully predict uh, HER2, which is a known ADC target in for the microtubulin based uh, similar type of mechanism based uh, payload. So the next example is in the kidney renal clear, uh, clear cell carcinoma. Again, this is the distribution between the normal score versus the tumor score. In this case, I'm giving example for the targets that are for DNA payload, uh, damage payload uh, class. So this class requires very low level of uh, normal expression, but uh, uh, here we can relax on the tumor expression level itself. So then the examples are given here, we can predict about 100 uh, candidate targets, uh, including a known target CD70, which, is, uh, which uses a DNA damage payload uh, based class, uh, payload. So in addition to identify a very optimum target that are expressed on the cell surface, uh, and also in addition to develop a very potent ADC, another key component for developing a successful ADC therapeutics uh, is uh, to have a uh, right patient. This is uh, particularly important in for the uh, ADCs targeting the solid tumor because uh, the expression are very heterogeneous uh, in the solid tumors. Almost uh, all the, uh, in all cases uh, that requires a companion diagnostic uh, for uh, selecting the right patient. So traditionally, these uh, biomarkers are based on target expression, especially using the IHC or ISH technologies to. Uh, estimate the um, uh, patient uh, the expressions in different patient uh, population. Uh, here I'm going to take, give example to use uh, TCGA RNA seq data to uh, predict which uh, patient uh, select a patient population for the ADC targets. Uh, but also we start to using uh, the mutation data to explore, which is a very exploratory uh, study to see whether we can use the genetic based biomarkers uh, as alternative biomarkers in addition to the uh, IHC based biomarker. The reason is the genetic based biomarker, obviously, very mu much more stable uh, in, because a lot of uh, tissues that we use are archivable tissues. The protein uh, are not as stable uh, as the uh, genetic markers. But those are still in the early exploratory uh, analysis. So, <clears throat> this is an example how we can use the RNA seq data from TCGA to estimate the uh, particular target uh, populations for uh, intended ADC targets uh, using HER2 as an example. W similarly to the target expression, we used both the differentiation between the normal tissue and the tumor, uh, between the tumor tissue and normal tissue. As you can see, the HER2 is uh, significantly expressed in the HER2 positive uh, tumor subtypes, breast uh, subtypes. In addition, we also estimate its uh, absolute expression level in different uh, tumor types, and as you can see uh, again, uh, in HER2 positive patient population, HER2 has a very high expression uh, as we all expected. So in addition to the traditional histology subtypes, uh, we also want, uh, we also uh, thought we should look into some other segmentation of population using the uh, mutation data that are available. So here is just as an example to look at EGFR, which is also a known uh, ADC target. Uh, into, in, different, uh, in addition to the known subtypes in breast, we also looked at the mutation segments in different um, lung cancer, lung adenal and lung squamous, as well as the ovarian cancers to see uh, whether they are overexpressed in certain mutation segments. <clears throat> Uh, as you can, uh, that's uh, in agreement with the uh, literature that EGFR is overexpressed in the lung squamous uh, subtypes. But in addition to this, when we look at the lung adenal carcinoma, if you look at the overall expression, they, uh, the, the lung adenal tumor doesn't seem to be differentially with the normal tissue. But when we look further segment into the mutation, EGFR mutation segment, you do see that uh, differentiation between the uh, mutant uh, uh, segment and then the wild type segment. So we then looked, uh, decided to look at this uh, genome-wide to see whether there are any mutations correlating to a certain ADC targets. Uh, again, using EGFR as an example here, 
Um, we also we identified the several mutations that are um, significantly correlated with EGFR, um, high, high mutation of EGFR. Uh, most of them are very uh, low frequency, uh, except the EGFR mutation itself. So it's a cis uh, uh, scenario here. Um, as you can see from this box plot again, that EGFR expression is high, exp uh, high, high expression, highly expressed in the mutant, mutant EGFR population compared to the wild type population. So this uh, uh, gives about 13% uh, in the lung cancer. Um, so this data looks promising that we maybe for uh, for some of the uh, for certain target uh, genetic marker maybe can be used as alternative biomarkers. So in summary, we have. Uh, used the TCG uh, RNA seq data to define a computation strategy uh, to uh, identify novel ADC targets, and also the rich so resource of RNA seq data from TCGA is an excellent resource for us to estimate the absolute abundance uh, level of a uh, target because this is a uh, very key factors for uh, uh, an optimum ADC targets. Uh, this uh, provides. Uh, also, guidance for the companion diagnostic development, as well as predicting the potential pop, uh, um, patient population for the clinical trials. We also explored to use uh, genetic-based biomarker in addition to the protein uh, expression-based biomarkers as uh, alternative biomarkers, which is uh, more stable. Um, the data from the EGFR uh, looks promising. So lastly, I would like to thank people who has uh, made major contributions to this project. Um, this is uh, under leadership of Pareto and Yad Vega and my colleagues uh, from the Computational Biology Group, as well as uh, my uh, other colleagues from the Biological Target Development, uh, tar Target Identification, and as well as the um, uh, uh, ADC Development Group. And, and lastly, I would like to thank uh, TCGA for making such uh, wonderful resources available and, uh, um, will, and uh, it has and will make great impact in the drug discovery. And thank you for your attention. clarify, because I might have missed it. For the thresholds, was it within tumor types, or was you defining your thresholds across the different tumor types for whether um, the tumor, you know, the, the, the continent you're looking at within the tumor samples? Within the tumor type. So within tumor types. So yes. if a tumor type happens to have very high expression of a given gene, um, would it, know, it wouldn't make your cutoff, would it? Because no, that's because the cutoff is uh, based on all the genes, right? Mm -hmm. So this is comparing to the median level or oh, the all the genes, okay. all the genes. Not so a single gene. yes, not the single gene. Yeah, so it's a um, transcriptome level rather than the gene level. Okay. Yeah, cool. so just to make sure it's uh, comparable across the different tumor types. Oh, we have one more question. Okay. Hi. So um, I was just wondering if uh, clonal evolution would be a problem if you're using a drug, uh, an ADC against a particular receptor. And uh, next thing you know, the tumor evolves so that the receptor is no longer prevalent on its surface. Uh, has that been observed? Is that a potential problem? Yeah, that's a great question. It, it has uh, um, been a um, uh, constant uh, argument, right, in the ADC field, because you may have heterogeneous exp expression of certain targets. So one thing we also noticed is, uh, although the um, the target, the, the ADC is targeting specific targets, but we also look, uh, observe the stand, standby effect where the uh, actually neighboring cells has been uh, shown to be, uh, be able to be killed by the um, release of cytotoxic agent. So th those are p p potentially can, uh, can be uh, useful for the, you know, for those uh, hydrogenase uh, uh, expressed tumor samples. But uh, of, of course, the, I think the most ideal ADC targets are those heterogeneous, uh, sorry, homogeneously expressed uh, targets. You know, you're targeting a lot of populations. But uh, in addition to that, uh, to add on that is also we can, we're also looking into combination therapies with other uh, therapeutics. So that will, uh, you know, hopefully alleviate those type of. So, so 
once the tumor, once the cytotoxin is in the extracellular matrix, how do you stop it from going to normal cells? Or does it not go into normal cells? Um, yeah, the, the, uh, if they are expressing the normal cells, then they will be going to the normal cells, right? But in terms of different payload, right, it depends on the payload too. If the payload is only targeting the proliferating cell, for example, the microtubulin based payload, they will have less effect on the normal tissue than the, you know, the cancer tissue. Because, I mean, just give example, we have uh, used GTEx to predict like certain tissue may have toxicities, right? But you know, in the you know in the real experiment, they may not they may not show those. And in some of the targets, the known targets, right, in the mar in on the clinical trials, uh, have high expression in the normal tissue, but they are they're fine in the clinic. So they depend. It's not only depending on the target expression. It also depends on the you know the payload expression, uh, the payload mechanism itself, and also some other criteria I didn't touch upon. For example, how well they are internalized into the tissue. So our last speaker for uh, session two, this afternoon session, is Theo Kleiningberg from Institute of Systems Biology, who's going to tell us about uh, mutation hotspots associated with gene expression, signaling pathways, protein domains, and drug response.